Hey, what's up, Internet? I'm L Director, and this is L Director Vision. Today, I have a very special unboxing slash maybe borderline review. We'll have to see. This is my current sheath knife, my fixed blade that I take with me on all my survival outings when I do uh, Surviving the Wild. And this was given to me as a junior high graduation gift. This is the Buck 119 Special. And uh, it's been a great knife. However... I've been like taking a look at some of the knives that have been online, or um, some of the I've been taking a look online at some of the knives lately that are out there that people recommend, and a lot of the old timers still like this knife. And I'm I'm a very classical, traditional person in a lot of ways, and um, it, it's been a a fantastic knife for me. But there's other things that I would like to be able to do, especially on my survival show, and so I did some research, and I know I'm going to take some flack for this. And so I bought, holy cow, this is heavy, the Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro Survival Knife by Gerber. And th th this is a, a huge controversy out there right now because this is actually the second incarnation of this knife. The first one was a total flop. Nobody liked it. Um, but this one has actually gotten a lot of really good reviews. In fact, if you go to Amazon.com and type in uh, Ultimate Pro Fixed Blade or just Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro. This one knife will pop up and the reviews on it are just r glowing. I mean, there's a few bad ones and a few middle of the road, but most of the reviews, I'd say like 90% of them, are five-star reviews. And that says something to me about this knife. So I'm going to open it up right now and then uh, we'll compare the, the two knives together and say, okay, why is this a better fit for me given the stuff that I'm into doing right now? So first off, I guess we'll go ahead and unbox this here. It seems ironic to me. It's almost like you need a, a knife to unbox the knife. So we'll go ahead and we'll just take this out across the top. As you can see, my 119 Special is extremely sharp because I keep it that way. And there we go. I really did this thing in good. Almost there. Oh man, that sucker is sharp. I just sliced my finger open on that blade totally by accident. I'm gonna go bandage this up. I'll be right back. And just like that, we're back. Nothing a little gauze and black duct tape can't fix. Um, to be honest, you know, I saw this had this rubber cap on it, and uh, so I, I thought it was okay, but apparently I grabbed it the wrong way and phew, Slice me right open. Right off the bat, I can tell you that the weight on this is good. It feels just about as hefty as my 119 Special. Uh, nice rubberized grip. I'm not going to do like full on tests of this knife and stuff because I mean you can go look elsewhere on YouTube and find all that kind of good stuff. So it's like why, why risk ruining the knife just to test the thing for YouTube when other people have already done it and it's held up just fine. So I'm not going to worry about that. First thing I am going to do though is pull off the whistle from the hilt of the sing. This is great. It's a full tang. It goes all the way through to the pommel, which means this piece of metal down here that makes up your smashing bit is the same piece of steel that makes up your blade. And that's one of the things I don't like about the 119 is that this is aluminum down here at the bottom. And uh, aluminum is a very soft metal. And so if I wanted to go like bashing on tent stakes or breaking up stones to get like a flint or something like that, this is going to be a, a terrible knife for that. I'm going to end up ruining the knife in the process. This one, on the other hand, is designed to be abused in that way. I mean, like I said, it's a full piece of metal all the way through. This is all one thing. Uh, this knife also has a built-in striking area right here for starting fires uh, with the included flint, which we'll look at here in a second. Sorry, not flint, fire steel. I've been corrected on that before by one of my viewers. Honestly, t to me, it's all the same thing. Flint is just a, a lot shorter word. Uh, it's got a couple holes here to lash to make a spear. It's got the nice cutout here, uh, choil for sharpening purposes. So you can sharpen the whole blade. This is just going to be a really awesome knife. And of course, you got the black and orange color scheme and the orange um, allowing you to see it if you were to drop it on the ground. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at the rest of this here. Open this sucker up. In case you guys haven't noticed, I do talk really, really fast. 
uh, people tell me that when I preach as well. So here we've got the fire steel. I have seen a few complaints where the fire steel has actually popped out from the holder, but you can just uh, put it back in and epoxy back in if that becomes an issue. And like all, all fire steels, we want to go ahead and we want to scrape off the covering on this first, or the coating. And any fire steel you get is has to be done like this, including like even a uh, a Swedish fire steel like I've got here. This is a Scout model. I've got the larger models too. I, I do like my fire starters. But uh, anyway, after we scrape this off, you take the back edge of the knife, and as you can see, we're already getting some sparkage going. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> cool. I do like my fire, so that's great. Uh, fire won't be an issue. We've got the survival whistle. That works out pretty good. Keeper, no, no, no. Go lay down. Pup thought I was calling for her. There is instructions on how to use the built-in sharpener. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. We've got the Bear Grylls Priorities of Survival Pocket Guide. That's gonna fit inside the sheath, as we'll take a look at here in just a moment. And we've got the sheath, pretty heavy duty, as everybody says, made of high quality rubber. We'll get rid of that point on there. And the knife just locks into place. That feels very secure. I don't even think it needs this extra nylon strap up here on the top. Uh, this is all ballistics nylon. And then the fire starter fits into place right down there. Everyone always says it's hard to get out, but if you lift and then pull, it should. Let's see. Man, that is tough. Urgh. There we go, lift and pull. Let's go ahead and uh, try putting this lanyard whistle on this. Now, one of the things that is surprising to me is the orange on this isn't as orange as I had envisioned it when I was looking at these online. There we go, that clips in like that, and then I can pull out my fire steel like that. Very nice. The knife pops in and out, cool. Awesome. The survival manual, there's this ribbon up here on the sheath, goes this way, and we'll drop the priorities for survival into the sheath like this, and it leaves just a little bit of ribbon hanging out. As you can see, not that much, and then to get it out, Pull up on the ribbon, and the survival guide pops right out. Now, I did pull up a PDF file of this online. It seems to be just real basic stuff. Some of it's kind of a joke, but some of it's got some good things. There's like some shelter diagrams. There's some knots. There's a couple different traps back here. All those things are very useful. I think the navigation and water is useful. But some stuff's just a joke, like clothing. Uh, somebody else had pointed out that, you know, once you're already out in the woods and out in the wild, you're kind of stuck with whatever clothing you've already got. The fire starting doesn't give a whole lot of information about starting fires. It just shows, like, the bow drill, the fire plow, and using a car battery. Um, but it doesn't really go into the details and specifics of how to use those methods. And so that's one of the things I think they probably should consider doing um, maybe in the future. I'll go and wrap this sucker back up here. Put it away, keep it in there in case I ever need it. I do have an upcoming survival show, uh, ep upcoming episode of Surviving the Wild that's called By the Book, where we are going to actually take a close look at uh, some of the most popular survival books out there. I'll probably throw this in here. And the goal is to, everything we do has to be by the book or from one of the books. And if it's not in the book, we're not gonna do it unless the, the way the book suggests just doesn't work. So, that all aside, uh, why the Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro versus the 119 Special? Well, I've already mentioned the pommel issue down here for hammering purposes, hammering tent stakes, breaking up stones, what have you. It comes with a built-in fire steel, not an issue because I've rubber banded a fire steel onto my Buck 119. Um, but one thing I, I do really like about it is it's got a built-in carbide sharpener right here. You can take your knife, not this one because it's not designed for it and just pull it right through, sharpen the knife right up. So that's a huge plus. Another big plus, the rubberized hand grip right here. My 119 is kind of a, a plastic handle, and when wet, this gets very, very slippery. In fact, I even tried to tie 550 cord around it at one point, but that just made it even worse, believe it or not. So 
the, the, the rubberized grip makes it very nice as well. It's also a thinner handle. I don't know if you guys can see the, the difference there. It, but it is a thinner handle, which makes it nice, especially because I've got little hands for a guy. So that's really cool. Um, the the built-in fire sharpener, not a big deal, because even with the 119 on my uh, non-off-brand, or my, my off-brand steel, I can still get some decent sparks out of that. So to me, the fire striker is not a big deal, but it is nice that they've included it. Um, probably not going to be turning this into a spear, so I don't, really don't need the lashing points on here. But the full tang is nice. The 119 does have almost a full tang. It comes down right about to down here. On some models, if you look really close, you can actually see the rivet that holds that in place. But ultimately, what it comes down to is based upon the reviews, based upon the videos I've watched, and everything like that, this knife is a lot more durable than this knife. Now again, this is not the Bear Grylls Ultimate. This is the Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro. This is the updated version. The original version did not have a full tang. The pommel kept breaking off on a lot of people. The steel was inferior. Um, uh, but So this has just been totally redesigned from the ground up. The only thing that people complain about about the Ultimate Pro is that it's got the black blade as opposed to a silver blade. And so if you're going to try to you know, be signaling for help, this is not the knife to be doing that. However, for every other survival use that I can think of, this is going to be a superior knife in every single way. And I'm really looking forward to taking this on my next excursion here in just a couple weeks. So, with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed. This has been my review and comparison of the Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro versus the Buck 119 Special. I didn't give you guys any of the technical specs. I'm sorry, but you know what? There's a lot of other videos out there that do, and the technical specs are... Yeah, honestly, you can go find those online if you wanted to. I don't know the technical specs. Personally, I don't care how much it weighs versus how much the other knife weighs. It, it's not an issue to me. I am a minimalist backpacker, and, oh, and that's the other reason why I got this. This knife, for you know, batoning and everything I've seen that this knife can do, is going to be able to replace this knife, my hatchet, and my lock blade that I carry as well. I still will need to carry my Swiss Army knife for uh, minute details and surgery and that kind of thing. But otherwise, I believe this knife can replace everything else because it's designed to do that. This knife is just a, a classic outdoors knife. But um, again, with the, the plastic handle, ceramic handle, I just I wouldn't fully trust it for batoning purposes. Uh, you can see that the difference in the, the point here on this as well. This is one is definitely cut out a lot more to help reduce weight, whereas the the um, the Ultimate Pro here is just a simple drop point. So that makes a big difference. The blade length, as you can see, a little bit shorter on this makes it easier to manage. With the choil up here, I can also choke up on the knife a little bit more, which shortens the blade even more by about an inch. So now it's like working with a three inch blade as opposed to like a five inch, or sorry, it's like working with a four inch blade as opposed to working with a five inch blade. This one does the choil as well, but it really doesn't do much to shorten the, the six inch blade length. So uh, I, I like just right now off the top of my hand, putting the two knives side by side, holding them, kind of balancing them, um, you know, taking the, the sheaths into consideration as well. We'll go ahead and put this one back. Everything to me right now is saying that the Ultimate Pro is a better knife than the 119 Special. And that's hard for me to say because I've had this, gosh, it's been 10 years since I graduated high school and then, you know, another three years before that from junior high. So I've had this knife for 13 years now and it, it's been my, my buddy, my traveling companion. I'm still gonna probably keep it in my truck with the fire steel on it, just so I've got it in emergencies if I don't have this knife. But I think this knife is now gonna become a constant outdoor companion. So with that said, I'm L Director. You've been watching L Director Vision. Like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think of this video. And stick around, because very soon we'll have updated uh, Surviving the Wild Episode 7, where I went snowshoeing and that was a failed trip. Uh, and in about a, just a few weeks, I'm gonna do a trip with my father. We're going to do a father and son special. And then two or three weeks after that, I'm going to do my uh, Surviving the Wild by the Book, where I'm going to take survival guides and test the skills from there. So stick around. There's going to be lots more where this came from. I'm L Director, and this has been L Director Vision.